Yona, thank you, Matheson. Um, she's a data science master's at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden with a focus on deep learning and optimization. And she received her bachelor's degree in mathematics from Kiel University in, G in Germany. Uh, Joanna's research uh, interest lies in the neural architecture search, compression and automated ML. And today she's going to be talking to us on the sensitivity analysis of hyperparameters in deep neural network pruning. Welcome. Good, perfect. Uh, also from where you welcome and hello to my presentation. As said before, I'm talking today about pruning and how it affects the optimal hyperparameters of a network. I think we've all seen the great promise of deep learning. That's why we are all here. Um, like in the last recent years with ChatGPT in general, when we look at healthcare sector or autonomous driving, deep learning shows great promise. But this great success of deep learning comes with a cost, the increasing network size. I think that's some figure we might have all seen uh, along our way of the deep learning roadmap and the models get larger and larger, they get more complex, and they grow in size. Uh, here at the top, we have GPT-3 with 175 billions of parameters, and we don't even know how many parameters GPT-4 might have, uh, a lot more. <laughs> and also, like, when we look at the top performing models in computer vision, uh, those usually have around tens to hundreds of millions of parameters. And this challenge is something we tackle wrong direction. So, <laughs> um, so this challenge is, uh, poses significant issues on the one hand side when we look at the environmental impact of deep learning, but also when we look at deployment, especially deployment on the edge. On the edge, we need small models. We need fast models that are still accurate. And this is quite contradicting to the current trend of deep learning getting larger and larger, getting bigger and bigger, uh, so we need to make our models smaller in some way. And this challenge is something we tackle at Embattle. Uh, we at Embattle are a team of engineers and researchers, and we are here for optimizing deep learning for deployment. We have an SDK, the Embattle Model Optimization SDK, uh, where the source code is available to empower your teams of data scientists, of engineers, or whoever is working with your models, uh, to optimize them for deployment. As said before, we are lo located in Gothenburg, which is fittingly the automotive capital of Sweden. And yeah, uh, so later on we will be here today and tomorrow, so come by for a chat. In general, there are many different ways to optimize deep learning. Uh, we can think of compression, we can think of neural architecture search. I mean, like today, or like in these uh, conference, there are many uh, like posters on your architecture search. Uh, but I want to focus on pruning today. So what's pruning? Pruning essentially uh, means removing parts of the network. This could be, ex for example, unnecessary weights, uh, neurons, or entire structures. And with that, we can reduce the latency, reduce power consumption, and reduce the one-time memory. And through pruning here at the bottom the show, uh, to showcase, we are able to reduce the latency significantly with only a small drop in accuracy in most cases. So I will start with an introduction to pruning so we are all on the same page. Um, so when we want to actually use pruning in our network cycle in our, to deploy our network on the edge, uh, there are a few questions, and questions we have to answer ourselves. First, when should I prune? And in general, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. You can prune before, during, or after training. Here are a number of pipelines or a list of pipelines that are used in literature. Um, the traditional three-step pipeline is maybe something you've heard of before, of training, pruning, and fine-tuning, or do it iteratively during the training process. Uh, today, we will focus first on we training after pruning. That means after training the network, we will prune it and then we initialize the weights uh, and then train again from scratch. Uh, later, uh, later after that, we will look at the traditional pipeline and compare it to retraining from scratch. 
So now we know when to prune, but how should I prune? I said before, pruning can involve removing weights, removing structures from the network. And when we look at CNNs, the most straightforward approach to prune is to do it unstructured. That means in our filters, just remove some unnecessary weights. Uh, I will talk about later what unnecessary means in that context, but let's go with that for now. Um, but with that, when we just remove single weights of our network, we are left with a sparse matrix. And on the edge, that's maybe something which is not really optimal to actually to speed up. So we need specified hardware uh, to be working with sparse matrices. Uh, one example which supports sparsity in, in some way or another is the 2-4 block sparsity, for example, supported by NVIDIA's A100s. And here in each block of four values, uh, two get pruned, and by that we are able to reduce the, uh, to make the model sparse with some kind of structure. But this, even though that's a nice sparsity approach, that's only supported by some hardware. To take the hardware out of the account, uh, we will look at structured pruning today. Uh, specifically, we will look at uh, pruning filters from our network, meaning removing unnecessary filters. And this is uh, supported by most hardware as it essentially changes the architecture of our network. So <coughs> now we come to the question of what unnecessary means. What are these unneeded weights? What are the unneeded filters. Uh, today we will look at a one norm magnitude pruning. Um, and that essentially means we remove filters with the lowest L1 norm. And this pruning technique uh, is quite well known. It's often used as a benchmark for other pruning techniques. And despite it's maybe, it's quite easy to understand in my opinion. And despite that, um, it often <coughs> surpasses state of the art pruning methods uh, depending on the given setup on the uh, pipeline or on the model. And finally, uh, to the question what to prune or how we need to apply pruning or scoring function to the network. Uh, we, on the one hand side, we have our pruning ratio, which we define as the ratio of uh, remaining flops. And that means, for example, a pruning ratio of 0 0.6 means 60% uh, of the flops are remaining after pruning. And then there are two main ways on how to apply this pruning ratio to our network. You could do it uniformly, that essentially means we apply our pruning ratio to each individual layer. Uh, so it's a bit like with scaling. So each layer gets uh, pruned down to 60% of its initial flops. Or we can apply it non-uniformly. In that case, uh, the pruning ratio is a whole network at once. And then uh, the uh, final width of each layer is automatically decided by the scoring function. In our experiments, we do both. So we compare both uniform and non-uniform pruning to see how they affect the optimal hyperparameters. So now let's look further into our actual research question. Um, since we do structured pruning, uh, as I said before, structured pruning actually changes the architecture of the network. And for that reason, we are interested in how the optimal hyperparameters change after pruning. So maybe let's look first at our experimental pipeline. This will also help when we look at the data later on. So in our pipeline, we start with um, having a base model. Um, in, uh, in total, we are looking at today at uh, Westnet 56, mobile net v2 on Cypher 10 and we also look at some ImageNet results with ResNet 50. And uh, we are especially looking at the weight decay and the learning weight. And to get an initial idea of how the performance landscape looks for pruning, we span a grid in that space. And we are only looking at the top one accuracy today. Good. So after that, uh, we prune our network. Uh, as I said before, we're doing uh, magnitude pruning and we retrain from scratch, at least in our first batch of experiments. And now in this example, we have 60% uniform pruning, and that means that 60% of the flops are remaining, and uh, uniform pruning uh, each layer uh, is pruned down to 
Good. And for visualization, we are looking at contour plots. Um, so we are essentially interpolating the data, um, but since the grid size is quite small, um, the interpolation is quite accurate. Good. So now let's look at some results. Here are some results of WestNet 56 on Cypher 10. Um, on the left-hand side, we have the base model, and then following the uniform prune models, and then after that, the non-uniform prune models. Um, these are 60% and 20% pruned, and 20% for structured pruning is quite aggressive, and 60% can be seen as intermediate pruning. And maybe first impression, or when you look at this data, that the performance landscape looks quite similar, even though we do quite aggressive pruning. And I think that was quite surprising when we started our experience. We were, we were expecting a shift or some like a different learning rate, larger or smaller, uh, when the network gets a lot smaller. Um, but apparently, at least in our experience, this was not the case. And when we now look at the best configuration of the base model, uh, here we got like 94%. Uh, we are in our training pipeline, we are essentially following the training pipeline of the main WestNet paper, so no special checks. Um, yeah, and this best configuration of the base model performs really well still on the pruned models, meaning that maybe uh, the optimal configuration is a good starting point after pruning as well. So maybe for learning rate and grade UK, we don't have to care as much about pruning. Uh, about uh, hyperparallel optimization. <laughs> then to further investigate uh, how the optimal areas change after pruning, uh, we looked at confidence ellipses. Uh, these ellipses, the black and the white ones, essentially describe uh, the area of the optimal hyperparameters. Uh, the black ellipses uh, are the area of the optimal hyperparameters within the top 0.5% in terms of top one accuracy and the white ellipses within the top 1%. And similar to our initial um, investigation, there's no clear shift, there's no clear trend after pruning. We also looked at mobile net v2 uh, on Cypher 10, and here similarly, um, there's no big difference in the performance landscape. And uh, once again, the initial parameters of the base model perform quite well or really well on the prune models as well. Good, as I said before, we also looked at ImageNet. And with ImageNet, uh, we only looked at 40% non-uniform pruning, 40% uh, mix of uh, quite intermediate pruning, and here, once again, it confirms our initial results that the uh, initial hyperparameters of the base model perform really well, or quite well, on the prune model as well. I uh, started talking about the fine tuning pipeline at the beginning as well. Um, so now we did retraining from scratch, meaning after pruning, we uh, reinitialized the weights. But that's maybe not the best approach to pruning. I mean, like the strength of pruning is that you can actually take use of the weights that are remaining after pruning of the already trained weights. And for that reason, um, maybe the fine tuning pipeline, meaning after pruning, you just continue training essentially, so you don't reset your weights. Maybe that's even better. Maybe uh, that will pose uh, an increase in performance, for example. Um, in general, like in the literature, there's some debate about that question. If you should do fine tuning, if you should do um, retraining from scratch, it's a case by case. Uh, study, uh, sometimes the one, sometimes the other is better. But for now, let's look at fine tuning. Um, so now we looked at fine tuning for Western 56 for the non-uniform pruning, where we essentially apply our pruning ratio to the whole network all at once. Um, and then the uh, width of each uh, layer is automatically decided by the scoring function, as I said before. And on the left-hand side of each block, we see the retraining results we have seen before, and then on the right-hand side, the fine-tuning results. Essentially the same crit, uh, but instead of retraining, we do fine-tuning. And, uh, one, and one, 
point I want to point out when we compare those two, when we compare retraining with fine tuning after pruning, uh, lays in the optimal areas. When we look at the area of the like best contour line, uh, the best contour line is the same for both retraining and fine tuning on each block. That means after fine tuning or by fine tuning, we were not able to increase the performance significantly. But we found something else that by fine tuning, the area of good parameters just gets a lot larger. Similar, similarly for the second best contour line. That means that the model gets, gets more robust to hyperparameter changes when we do fine tuning instead of retraining. We did the same experiments with mobile net v2. If that continues. Oh. Okay, perfect. And uh, here, once again, we got similar results. Uh, that the, when we look at the first, ah, oh, maybe I should start. We looked as well on non-uniform pruning, and in this case, on 60%, on 30% non-uniform pruning. And here, once again, when we look at the best contour line, uh, the area gets a lot larger when we do fine tuning instead of retraining from scratch. And similarly for Westnet, uh, 56 on Cypher 10. Uh, we were not able to improve our performance, but as I ju just said, uh, the area increases as well for the second control line. So let's wrap up, uh, maybe revisit what we have seen. Uh, so I started with uh, showing the importance of pruning or of compression in general. And we have seen a short introduction on pruning and then I've shown some experiments on the impact of structured pruning on the learning rate and the rate decay. First, we started looking at retraining from scratch pipeline. Um, with that pipeline or with that, these experiments, we found that pruning uh, the performance landscape does not change significantly, meaning that maybe, meaning that uh, the optimal hyperparameters of the base model pose significant starting points or good starting points for our prune models as well. And then these observations even got confirmed when we did fine tuning instead of retraining from scratch. With fine tuning, we were able to show that um, the model gets more robust to hyperparameter changes, uh, perhaps due to its good starting point, since we are not resetting its weights. Um, so with fine tuning, we are a lot more likely to fall in a good area uh, after pruning with our initial hyperparameters. So this is the end of this presentation on pruning. Uh, that's essentially one part, what we do at Embattle. We are in general concerned or interested or working with uh, hardware where optimization of models. Uh, so if you want to have a chat, myself as well as Andreas and Daniel at the back are here today and tomorrow, so come by for a chat. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Questions?